excited to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. Before we dive into this powerful episode, please remember to subscribe to our channel and give us a five-star rating on iTunes and continue hustling. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Chiropractic Rocks, True Weight Solutions, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, doTERRA, Sherman College of Chiropractic, SCED, New Patients in a Box, The Influencer Authority Podcast Training, and Prime Spine Consulting. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 296 of the Cairo Hustle Podcast. I am your co-host, Luke Millette, and here's your host, Jim Chester. Today we had the opportunity of interviewing Dr. Eddie Hall, and if you want to hear more about power, passion, and prosperity, stay tuned. Welcome to another episode of the Cairo Hustle Podcast. Uh, we have Eddie Hall with us today and uh, really excited to, to roll this guy's story out for you. I know he's doing a lot to support the chiropractic profession. And if you guys don't know about him, you need to know about this guy. And uh, just before we get started, I want to lay down some foundation for you guys. Uh, Cairo Hustle does protect the sacred trust in chiropractic and protects free speech in this beautiful profession. And we do support the subluxation based chiropractor. And uh, we, we love the philosophy of this profession and where the profession is headed because um, we, we believe in uh, innate intelligence and that the body that made the power that made the body heals the body. And uh, Eddie Hall is coming in today from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. <laughs> and, and, and my co-host Luke Millett's coming in from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Great. And uh, I'm in Grand Junction, Colorado. So um, we're bringing you today an episode with Eddie Hall. And Eddie, I know that you've been a chiropractor now for um, a, a couple of years, and I, I know that you're doing a lot of work to support the profession and live the chiropractic lifestyle. But I'm really curious, man, um, and I'm sure our listeners will be too. How did you get into this chiropractic profession? And tell us your chiropractic story. The funny story. So as you sent me these questions, I was like, oh my goodness, I say this all the time. So it's just <laughs> second nature at this point. So as you and I were talking about, I opened my first gym when I was very young um, and being young and a lot of testosterone and a lot of ego. Uh, every Friday, I would close the gym two hours early and a group of my friends would come up and we have what we call deadlift Fridays. So if you can envision this, right, a lot of guys with their shirts off, rock music playing with a lot of weights. Um, but long story short, I, I, I was deadlifting really, really heavy and popped two discs in my back, fell right to my knees, um, screaming bloody murder. Um they turned the music off. A couple of the guys grabbed me, put me in the back of my own truck, drove me home, put me in a tub full of ice, and I sat there. I couldn't move. Thankfully, my girlfriend was there at the time, and she helped me get up, and I was crying. I mean, it was a, it was a devastating, devastating, devastating time in my life. So I went to the ER. Obviously, MRI showed what we already kind of already knew, and uh, they said, hey, okay, the earliest we can get you in for surgery is four weeks. I'm like, is that bad? Why the hell am I waiting four weeks? You know? And so I actually went to the gym in a wheelchair to see everybody the next day, just cause I just love it. And, um, thankfully one of my clients, the training client, her husband was a chiropractor, Dr. Wojcicki in Kinston, North Carolina. And, uh, she says, look, I had no idea what crack chiropractic was. And she says, look, why don't you go try it out? You have nothing to lose. You're already in a wheelchair. I was like, you got a point here, you know? So I drove down the street or I had someone drive me down the street and uh, he did his work up and he really explained to me what chiropractic was all about and how it could help. And my age and my fitness level and how my body was made to heal. It just needed to be nudged in the right direction. And, um, and, and it resonated with me big time, man. And so he shot his film to do some postural stuff, started doing decompression, started adjusting. And, uh, two weeks later I'm walking another four weeks. I'm lifting weights. Not, not, not like I was, but enough to at least start feeling good again and um canceled the surgery obviously and it's all she wrote after that man I, and after that because i'd already started opening other gyms i was like man i'm meant to do more like fitness is great and i love it but i think i'm meant to do more how can i do what he did and i literally this was in september i applied to life well actually i flew down to life university first then i applied to life university got in like two weeks later packed my bags left in the first of december so in two months time, I made this whirlwind of a change in my life, sold everything I owned, all my motorcycles, boats, houses, everything, and just left. And that was, that's the start to the journey, man. It's been an amazing ride. 
And as you've continued your journey to be where you are today, what are some things that make you unique or make you stand apart from other chiropractors in your area? Oh, in the area? Or in general. In the area, that's an easy one. We uh, we make the proper recommendations to keep the patients well. Um, but I think what makes us unique as a family, a chiropractic family, I really want to touch on is there's 22 chiropractors in my wife's family. So I'm part of that family now. Dr. Joe Stuckey was her grandfather. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him or not, but he was a legend in chiropractic. He gave the first $10,000 to start Life University to Sid Williams back a, a while back, obviously. And um, and so having that, I think, is very unique because we have so many different generations of chiropractic in our family, very successful chiropractors, which is which is sometimes unique as well. Um, so, uh, you know, family reunions are really boring. <laughs> <laughs> but um, other than that, I think that's really unique and different. Yeah, I'm sure there's no adjusting tables out. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Absolutely right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, um, chiropractic is not just marketing. And it's not just uh, adjusting. It's, it's, it's a science, philosophy, and art. Um, and, and as we talked about earlier, there's, there's a lot of things about the truth of chiropractic from, um, you know, the, the history of chiropractic up until present, you know, you talked about like life college and how life, how life got started. And there, there's a lot of, uh, reason why uh, a leader like Sid Williams was able to start that school because of his community influence. And, um, I guess my question to you is if you're, if you're thinking about upstart or growth, what are some ways that you would, uh, and talk about marketing and getting new patients for a chiropractor or a chiropractic practice in general? So whenever a chiropractor, so we do consulting with other chiropractors too. And a lot of chiropractors have this need, 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 I need more patients. Mm -hmm. You don't really ever really need more patients. You need better systems to keep those patients around longer. Mm -hmm. And so I'd rather almost, I'm not trying to dodge your question, but I almost want to just talk about that because Let's it's like it. chicken and the egg kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we have all these patients flooding our door. We're not even ready or capable of handling these new patients properly. And then they discontinue care in six visits. Is that really what we're trying to do here? So I think that most people really need to nail those down because in my experience working in this profession with other practitioners, they don't tend to have those dialed in all the way. And so being able to tighten those screws first, but then, you know, getting new patients, everybody makes it seem like it's so hard. <laughs> it's not, right? I mean, just be a good person, be ethical, be moral, go out and show your face and be part of the community and have people, I mean, love on people and plant your flag about what you're about. I mean, don't be don't be scared to, to, to say what you do, why you do it and how you do it differently, right? And um, just having, having that conversation with people and letting them know, hey, look, you may not think you need me right now, but when you do, I'm here to help you. Amen. And then when they do come in, they're like, oh, I should have done this three years ago when I first met you, because now I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. <laughs> you know, so it's it's really I, I think that, that 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 this topic gets talked about so much in our profession, but nobody's prepared for the new patients when they get them. So that's why they continually need new patients. Mm. It's never as much as a new patient problem, because if you go to these clinics and you go into their basement, and you look at their dead files. They're everywhere, hundreds of thousands of people that didn't continue with care. We need to focus our attention on that. So maybe learning better scripts or having some kind of game plan of communication with your patients from a day one, day two, day three, um, obviously aspect report of findings too, right? So if you get, when you get that first phase of care done, how are you re-engaging the patient and know, hey, we're making good progress. This is what we're going to do next. You know, these are the things we need to be talking about as a profession. Not, oh, let me just get all these new patients in the door. All right. Well, let's play this game then. Yes, you, you wake up tomorrow morning and all of your patients are gone and you have to start again from square one. What is the first thing you do? First thing I do is call my mom and cry. <laughs> no, I'm and joking. Then, and then what's the second thing? <laughs> yeah, I'm joking, man. Um, the first thing I would do, do you still have a building? Because I have to buy a building again. The what? Do you still have the building you practiced in? Oh yeah, yeah. You have okay, but say, that's, that's a whole different topic. We can talk about it if you want. <laughs> I would just I would go join groups. So what I did when I came here, I knew no one. I'm not from this town, not even from the Midwest, and uh, didn't know the culture, didn't know how people were going to be. I first week, I started a networking group. 
I was like, I'm going to be president of a networking group because these other ones don't fit what I'm trying to do. I'm not just going to join one. I just started cold calling people. Hey, I see you're a mortgage lender. You want to go to lunch? I'm new to town. So you're going to get some no's, but you're going to get a lot more yeses than no's. And then you start to figure out who those people that you want to be around because they're going to be really good, influential people in the community. That's where I would start. Number one, build relationships. This is a relationship business. And a lot of people think business is a bad word, but we are in a business. Um, and so building those relationships to maximize outcomes, because if you make one. So let's say you have 10 people in a networking group. If they send in two people a year, that's a 20 patients you didn't have to do anything for. But you could show up to this meeting for 45 minutes. And if you're only getting 20 a year out of that group, you're really not probably maximizing the output anyway, but it's somewhere to start. And then I'd go join a gym. I'd see if I can do posture screenings in the front of the gym when people walk in or when they leave um, or nerve scans or whatever, whatever that thing is that you want to do. I'd go there and I hit every single gym because I have such a background in fitness. It just easy resonates for me. Right. And then I go to companies and I talk to HRs. Hey, can I see some numbers about, you know, um, time off of work due to injury time off of work due to, um, colds, um, whatever that is. And then, then you can offer, say, you already have this problem here. How can I help you? And as you help, you receive, right? That's amazing advice. Uh, good advice to anyone who's, uh, listening right now or in the future. And so, okay. So you work out a lot, you go to the gym, you keep yourself fit. What are some other things that you're doing to keep yourself and your family healthy? Well, I think the biggest muscle in our bodies that gets underworked and underappreciated is the one between our six inches and our ears. So I do a lot of work on that. Um, I read a lot of books like uh, me and Jim were talking about earlier. I pray a lot. Um, I'm, I'm just I'm really working on personal growth because as a business, our business will never outgrow us. And so as we continue to grow as a person, as an individual and maximize that, we're able to grow our family life better, et cetera. Right. So we read a lot in this house. We pray a lot in this house we're, we're, we practice gratitude every single day at dinner. So mostly that muscle, but obviously we, we take our foundational supplements that we're not going to get in our diet. So we take supplements, we eat really clean foods. We do a bunch of our veggies and a bunch of our fruits here on our property. Um, we, we really just try to eliminate anything from the store, honestly. So if we can do it, I, I kill a lot. I'm a big hunter. So I, I kill most of the meat we eat throughout the year. Um, so I'm, I think that if we can eliminate going and buying processed garbage, that we're going to be a lot better off as has been proven. And so we, we really focus a lot on that, but we do exercise a lot and, um, and, and just mental, mental, mental framework, I think is a big one that most people miss. I got to share this quick story. If you don't mind, I, so do it. I was uh, getting ready for the office. So I only practice on Monday, Wednesdays, I don't, I'm off Tuesdays and Thursdays. And, um, and so I was in, I, I was coming up, I had got dressed up, you know, and I hear Moana blaring in my daughter's room, right? And so I open the door up, and she is running around her bed. Then she hit a set of burpees. Then she do push ups, and she'd run again. And I say, Kinsley, what are you doing? I'm just getting my fitness on, Dad. <laughs> and but what I'm saying is, I think this is if we if we show this in our families, our kids are going to see this, and they're just going to do it. And so that you know, impact in that next line i think we really need to focus on that's why we need to focus on ourselves so they see this from us yeah and it's uh it's generational health absolutely and, and, and you know everybody wants to talk about how you're going to retire well i think that if you practice generational health now you retire and you have more mobility because you've been healthy your whole life and now you can see the other people in your your family live in vibrant lives we're 34th in the world in healthy life expectancy so most people retire and they're miserable Injure, I mean, they, they can't enjoy any of that, the fruits of their labor for that however many years, right? Yeah. And so I completely agree. If we take care of ourselves now, man, we're really going to be able to enjoy it in the later years, right? Yeah, and I, I think that that's a topic we could drive home is, uh, you know, adding years to your life and life to your years with chiropractic. Absolutely. And, and you know, it's not just about the pain or the disability or the infirmary it's about the quality of life and the human performance aspect yeah and, and how, how do you get more people to move away from so people make two decisions right they're either moving away from pain or towards pleasure and the majority of people will just move away from pain so how that's where our education as a chiropractic as a profession we, we've we've really lost it not completely but a, a majority of them don't educate enough to let the patient know what you just said how mm -hmm. 
how much more we're doing and putting a Band-Aid on a problem. We're curing a problem by, by letting the body do what it's made to do. But you, when you hear that story, when you hear subluxation, you, you know, you don't hear these words that are unique to what we do enough from most of the chiropractors, in my opinion. Well, you know, when you injured yourself, you subluxated some uh, vertebrae in your back. Absolutely. And when you got your first adjustment, it started to remove the subluxation and allow the body to free up and allow the nerves to work properly right. instead of to be impinged and subluxated. But, you know, when you think about like that type of like an, a, an injury that you sustained and how you recovered, um, a lot of people just don't understand that spinal health is important until they hit their mid forties, late fifties. And then they come in, they're like, Hey doc, do that miracle thing that you do with that adjustment thing that you do and save my thing. And you're like, well, bro, can you see this x-ray I just took on you? It looks like you haven't done anything to keep your spine and your nervous system healthy for 40 or 50 years. And now you're like, Hey, throw me the hell Mary and save me with this one miracle adjustment, which I think sometimes probably can help, but you, there's no way that you're going to be able to go back and take care of the spinal degeneration that's been elongating for decades. Of course, and when that's the thing too, if I was getting, if I was under care prior to the injury, would I would I ever had the injury? Number one, and if I did, how much quicker would I have recovered? Mm -hmm. Right, and so that's, I mean, that's what we should be lecturing on in our communities. You asked about the communities earlier. Go set up a lecture somewhere, pay people to have dinner with you, and you just talk about your truth. And the truth of chiropractic, and you can't lose mm -hmm. because it's too logical to get wrong, right? You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Chiropractic Rocks, True Weight Solutions, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, DoTerra. Sherman College of Chiropractic, SCED, New Patients in a Box, the Influencer Authority Podcast Training, and Prime Spine Consulting. Let's hustle. And we only think that health is on the outside. Yeah. Like I have a friend of mine that um, went through a major sh shoulder surgery and he's talking about how he's working out, but he's not seeing any results. But I'm like, look, bro, the results are in here. Yeah. Like this is the part that you're making the impact on. You might not see it here, but yeah. it's definitely working here. And these are the parts of us that we have to really be, you know, considerate of with our health. It's not just the muscles and the outside appearance because you looked as healthy as you could be. You were yeah. as strong as anybody. But when you got, you know, the, the, the vertebrae subluxated, like it doesn't matter what, what the outside appearance is. It's about what's inside of us. And that's, you know, when we keep our nervous system tuned up with chiropractic care, it keeps our immune system stronger, keeps our nervous system stronger, our organ system works better and our functionality is improved. And that's why the guy we interviewed the other day, he was like, I work with a professional sports teams. Do you think I don't adjust them before the game, during the game and after the game? Because I'm, I'm adjusting for human performance, not for pain symptoms. Right. And that, but that's not talked about nearly enough though. Right. Mm -mm. I know the chiropractors around our town because when I became president for the district, I just go around and meet everybody anyway. I just <laughs> enjoy your relationships. You're you know? like me. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, and that's why you know so many people, right? I mean, it's, and it's fun. Everybody's got a cool story and I just really enjoy it. But going around and seeing these kind of clinics and having a couple lunches and oh, I'm, I'm serving 20 people a day. I'm just like, a day? How is that even possible? You know, like we should be not saying everybody has to be high volume, but man, we should be just touching as many people as we possibly can in the hours that we're going to be there. So we can sh we can share that message that you just very eloquently <laughs> stated. I mean, that was pretty top notch right there. I mean, that was better than anything I would do. But, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and just and just let them know, like, hey, look, this is what we do. This is why you need it, because it's not hard to understand the concept of what you said. Mm -hmm. Bones out of place. We have a dysfunction. Dysfunction is bad, <laughs> right? No, less dysfunction, no dysfunction. Good. Right. So it's, it's a very easy concept. So we learned a little bit about how you would go about obtaining new patients, but what are some of your favorite ways to stay engaged with your current patients? How do you, how do you do like your touches on them to make sure they're coming in for their appointments and keeping them engaged. So a mentor of mine always said, if you don't give them a reason to come back, you give them a reason to leave. 
And so that should register with everybody listening. Um, the, what are we leaving them with, right? So I give them a hug, a high five, great adjustments today. You got the power turned on. Can't wait to see you next week. If they're a maintenance patient, they're an acute patient. We're talking, we do curve correction. So we're talking about the initial curve correction process, what the next day in our office looks like in that process, just to keep them. Hey, man, I can't wait to come back. And I'm, I'm really building that momentum going forward. And I love the ones that I see every week. And I've been seeing them every week for years and years and years. And I'll ask them sometimes, but hey, Miss J, how's it going today? I feel great. But why are you here? Just to see how good you've taught them. If you start playing this game in practice, you'll see where you missed the boat a few times. And then you have that chance to re-educate again. But, I, you know, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, it, it goes back to people making deposits in their health account. And mm -hmm. that's why, you know, after the seventh visit, typically when you go and talk to somebody that's been under care for that long, you ask them what brought them in the first place, you know, 50% of the time, they're not going to remember what they came in for. They just know that chiropractic is now part of their life and it's making them feel better. And they have to make these deposits in their health account in order for them to have a, a higher quality of lifestyle. And I, I think that that's where you're getting to is like, even after years, you're like, why do you come in every week? Well, I have to make deposits into my health account. Yeah. And I, and I, I want to stay healthy long term and my life matters to me. So why wouldn't I take some of my hard earned money and put it into your pocket to take care of me? And it's such a small investment for <laughs> such a big return on investment. I mean, it's I tell patients all the time after I, would, I do a lot of care planning and I'll write a care plan and they'll pay it in full for forty five hundred dollars. And I'm like, this is like one hundred thousand dollars worth of care I'm giving you right now. This is like the benefit your body's receiving. Right. Mm -hmm. Like but, the, the million dollar adjustment. <laughs> no doubt. Well, I mean, seriously, everyone should be a million dollars because that power is getting turned on every single time. And there's no measure to that, how important that is, right? Amen. So just to kind of branch off to a new topic for a little bit, how do you see chiropractic changing, developing, or evolving in the next 20 years? I think like we talked about pre-show is this time is now, and you hear this all the time. So almost like, as I'm saying it, I almost cringe a little bit, but I really think it's now because of the pandemic. And like we talked about earlier, health isn't being talked about nearly enough. How to promote more health, chiropractically, nutritionally, um, exercise, mental health. These are the things that I think that obviously all of us are well versed in as practitioners. And this is our niche. And we really need to, but we need, we have to share our message. And we can't be scared of planting our flag for what we believe in and getting kicked back from some people in our community. That's going to happen and, and embrace it. It's a good thing. Not everybody you want coming in your office anyway. You know, I mean, you do in the grand scheme of things, but there's those people you're just not going to resonate with. And so I think that our, our profession is primed. That pump has been primed and we just got to keep on, you know, riding the wave that we've been given, but doing it from a, a, a strategic standpoint too. Right. Well, what advice would you give to other chiropractors listening who might be stuck in their own way, who have, you know, trouble removing themselves or their ego from the equation. Well, they're, they're, they're not getting uncomfortable enough. If you put yourself in enough uncomfortable situations, you have no other response than to grow. And I think that that's where they get comfortable and they just kind of sit here and they're okay with being okay. Cause we, we see a lot of clients like that, but how do we spark that fire to know, like, you know what? It's not about the money. It's, it's not about anything else but serving humanity the way that we can do it and only we can do it and uh, getting them fired back up and, and, and working on this. And I try to get uncomfortable every day, whether that's a cold shower, going into an awkward conversation. I mean, whatever it is, because you, you only feel better after, right? Yeah, you know, I've come to realize that chiropractic has had uh, – uh, a challenge with public perception for a long time. And that's why we do this show as much as we do is to get into more households and to educate and inspire more people in the chiropractic profession. And um, maybe somebody will listen to our episode, Dr. Eddie, and they'll be like, wow, I didn't know that I was supposed to make deposits into my health account right. and at chiropractic adjustments, like a million bucks, like right. that, that might turn some people's like switch on and they'd be like, wow, I should probably go get checked by a chiropractor and see if, you know, my body can have better human performance for something. Yeah. I don't know. You but know what's remarkable that you brought this up? So I had a <laughs> this this 20-year-old, okay, female college student. We have a college here in town. She comes in, Olivia. I love this girl. 
She's about, she's going to be a chiropractor. I'm going to bring her name up because it's not hip and you don't know her last name. So she comes in and she sits down for a consult. One of her friends sent her in and um, I'm like, Olivia, what's going on today? What can I help you with? I just don't want to get sick, doc. What? How often do you hear that from a first time patient? But we should be hearing that more is, is what you're kind of saying, right? Mm -hmm. So that educational, why is this going to prevent us from getting sick? The health deposits. I mean, I love it. Like that's, if we can get more people to come in like that, oh, I just don't want to get sick. I just want to maximize my health and performance. I want to play better golf. I want to, whatever that thing is for that person, that's going to be a really cool way to practice. Yeah. And, you know, I think we, we, we want to say, oh, those millennials, those Gen Xers are the, that group of people. They just don't get it. But I think more, more now than ever, you know what they're seeing? They're seeing chiropractic ads in their scroll. Yeah. They're seeing chiropractors doing little videos. Yeah. They're seeing chiropractic YouTube channels crushing it. They're seeing chiropractors doing podcasts. They're seeing our show and they're like, huh, these guys aren't even chiropractors and they're promoting this professional chiropractic. What's going on? Yeah. And, and, and I, I think that now the, the younger generations of scrollers, yeah, they're being inundated with messaging constantly, just like this. And, you know what they're seeing? They're seeing people in the chiropractic space out there promoting and establishing a message of, of chiropractic that's more consistent than ever before. Absolutely. And, and I know that we get 10 times the programming from, you know, the, the medical mafia, but when it comes to like the chiropractic message, we're actually promoting more so than ever before. We just, so as a state association at our last board meeting, like a month ago, we decided we we're going to pay for billboards to be put up all throughout the state of Wisconsin. That's pretty powerful, man. So now you're riding down the freeway on your way home and you see a chiropractic billboard, better health, try chiropractic first. Mm. Oh man, I can't wait to see what we get <laughs> out of that. I thought it was a genius idea. And we all came up with it in the room, Dr. Wade that, you know, I, I kind of spearheaded that. And I mean, we're going to have a lot of impact, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, messaging is important. No question. So who would you say have been some of your biggest heroes or inspirations as you've been on this journey to be where you are today? In chiropractic or in general, Luke? In general. Well, I mean, honestly, I think it all started from my mom. We were, she was a single mom. She worked three jobs to keep food on the table, took me to every sporting event. I played in college, and she would drive to every home game, never missed a game ever in middle school, high school, or my collegiate career. Um, so seeing that hustle um, was really, really motivating because I know if I wanted something out of life, I got to work my ass off for it. And um, I always tell people when I get on stage is it, it, I'm not the best adjuster in the world. I'm not the best communicator in the world, but I will outwork your ass every single day because I'm going to wake up earlier and I'm going to stay up later and I'm going to do the things that, need to, that I need to do to be great. And uh, I saw that from her. I want to get emotional, but um it was a big thing for me as a child. And then obviously, I mean, now as I got into chiropractic, there's so many, there's so many greats. Um, but my, my father-in-law was really took me under his wing and he was in practice for 26 years. Very, very, very highly successful. Um, but not even just about chiropractic, but how to be a dad, how to be a man, how to, you know, just really be who you're meant to be. And he's introduced me to reading these books and, on my morning rituals now. And, you know, you know, this all started 10, 11 years ago, but it, it, it obviously starts to mold you into who you wanted to be and who you should be, but not having those people in your corner to get you there, you know, you're going to lose. Right. Eddie, we need to get you on bigger stages, bro. Let's do it, man. I'm all over <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to send you a copy of the book we wrote last year. Cause the last question that I saw from your interview questions, I can't wait for that one. It's like my favorite one. Well, back to what you just said a minute ago. I think that's why Jim and I make a really good team because I stay up late and he wakes up early. <laughs> hey, perfect marriage right there, guys. Perfect. There's always someone awake. That's awesome. We never miss a minute, right? The hustle team is always awake. Yep. Right. <laughs> so, okay, here we go. Tell us a miracle story or something amazing that you've seen happen in your clinic with one of your patients i've been waiting on this for the last 30 minutes all right here we go it's in the book so i encourage everybody to read the book by the way i'm gonna do a shameless plug here do it 
Triple P, your GPS to success. Um, but in, in my chapter in this book, I had this was right before I had a really major injury. Um, so this family got referred in, very autistic 10 year old child, young boy. Um, they drove three hours one way to come to my clinic because I've had such good results with the same similar cases that they knew and they and they got referred in. So first visit, she drives all the way in. Not only structurally did I find out what was going on with this young man's body that could help him maximize his outputs, but what nutritionally they needed, because we all know the brain needs certain things, especially in these exaggerated cases, because he was um, super sensory overload, didn't touch his sisters, never hugged his mom, didn't play outside. I mean, he just it, it was overstimulated like this. Right. Um, nonverbal, never once spoke a, a word. Um, and so we obviously started working on his spinal care and started getting the power back on and letting the body do what it's supposed to do and hardwiring the system the way that it was made to be. And then we gave him some nutrition and we changed some of it. We did some diet modifications. We did some supplementation that we know worked really, really well um, for that. And about two and a half, three months into it, um, and I'm busy. I'm going room to room to room to room. The family leaves. So they have a family of five and they all get adjusted. The grandmother even comes, which was really neat. And uh, so they leave, they check out and they're driving and I'm bouncing between patients. And one of my CAs runs into the hall and says, Dr. Hall. I got an emergency phone call and I'm like, oh my God, did they get into a motor vehicle accident? You know, what happened? You know, so I, okay, tell everybody I'm going to be running a little bit late. I got to go take this call. I got on the phone and the mother is crying, like just bawling her eyes out. And I'm like, what's going on? Uh, well, Dr. Hall, you're never going to believe what just happened. I'm not going to say his name, but it, my son just asked me to go get a cheeseburger. And I'm like, well, out of all things he could have started with, that's not officially what I was thinking. But so he spoke at the stoplight after that, la that, that, that treatment. And that to this day is just almost surreal to me. Um, and I have the little girl, his, his sister was 14, adorable 14 year old, but she never played with her brother. She never got that, that intimacy that she wanted out of that relationship. Right. And so the next time this family came in, she handed up me a note that said, Dr. Hall, thank you for giving my brother back. And I keep it in the console of my car because if I ever get a little sideways one day, I know exactly what I can do to course correct very quickly. And so that is one of the coolest stories that I'll probably have ever in my career. Hopefully there's many, many, many more to come, but I will always, always, always cherish that and the ability to serve that family. That's an incredible story. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. So you mentioned the book. Is there a website where people can go buy it? Yeah, we go on Amazon and buy it. Um, or you can go on powerpassionprosperity.com and there's some links for some events that we host. Um, we have some, we do some coaching, uh, consulting with chiropractors and, and, and associate mentoring and that kind of thing too. We do, we just started a student program. We haven't launched it yet. We just have a meeting on it, um, two days ago, Sunday. So, um, we, we got some big things coming up. We do the podcast links going to be on the website as well. Um, the book is, you know, obviously I'm biased, but it, it took a lot of time, energy and effort, but I think we have a really good, we got some really, really cool feedback. And, um, we base an event once a year, we call it the GPS to success event based around the books and the principles in the books to maximize success. Not that we all got it figured out, but I feel like we, we got a pretty good hold on it. And, um, so we have a, we, we keep it intimate. So we have a group of 45, 50 DCs that come out and we sit down and we go through goal setting. We go through mapping out the next year. We go through personal growth development, action steps. We really dig into the person, um, so we can maximize the next 12 months and forever. Is there a website where people can register for that? It's right. It's, it's if you go to powerpassionprosperity.com, it's going to pop up a link for it. Awesome. Well, at this juncture, uh, Dr. Eddie, um, just want to say thank you so much for spending some time with us today and being episode 296 of the tapestry of the truth in chiropractic. And sometimes we can be challenged by what the truth is, but the chiropractic story is the real truth of what we do and why we do it. And uh, we just want to um, thank you once again for being our guest and hopefully you have a great rest of your day. Thank you guys, man. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Eddie. Well, good work, guys. Well, thanks. Thank you, you so too. much. Talk soon. Yes, we'll sir. See you. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.